Mr. President, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Fifty years ago, after the guns fell silent, 800 delegates from 50 states in San Francisco, realizing that future generations must no more face the lessons of 1945, signed the United Nations Charter document. Securing a safer future, promoting the rights and freedoms of every living individual, we are the visions of those founding leaders. 135 additional states are today members of this democratic organ, embracing almost every single state on this planet. Five decades on, the dreams of those delegates at the original San Francisco conference are still shared by every single delegate here in New York. The world has changed. Giant nations are no more confronting each other with deadly weapons. The Iron Curtain has given way to closer cooperation, and the threat of nuclear annihilation has receded. Giant economic blocks are emerging, and one-time arc enemies are today close allies. These developments are paralleled with the struggle for peoples under colonialism. Hardly any former colonial territory had achieved complete independence 50 years ago, but today there is not one single state under colonial domination as the UN turns 50. The resolution of ancient and emerging new conflicts, the provision of humanitarian aid to the millions of hungry and dying peoples of the world, the UN through its agencies has grappled with. Mr. President, these are remarkable achievements Sadly, though restricted to the richer nations in the north, the ripples are yet to make significant impact on the poorer smaller nations in the south. While the wealthier north enjoy stability, democracy and economic prosperity, increased productivity, expanded markets and job opportunities, the underdeveloped poor wallow in debt, famine, instability, disease and death. On fairly depressed commodity prices, plus a huge debt hang threatening recovery for third world developing economies, capital and investment diversions to newly liberated Eastern Europe has left starved the crippling economies of the world's poorest. Africa's debt alone has moved from a staggering 200 billion United States dollars in 1993 to 211 billion dollars in 1994. Real per capita aid have fallen since 1991, and Sub-Saharan Africa's share of direct foreign investment for developing nations has hit a mere 5%. The level of overseas development cooperation is at its lowest ever. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, these imbalances are creating new tensions and divisions in Africa. From Kigali to Monrovia, the dark continent is beleaguered with armed conflicts. Africa's armed movements, coups toppling democracies, are the results of acute poverty. Insurgencies threaten democracies, and today, armed guerrillas are a threat to the envisaged democracy in Sierra Leone. Democratic elections are billed for the first half of next year. Speculations are that armed activities may disrupt the entire process. In early March this last year, our Secretary General appointed Ambassador Dimka, an Ethiopian, a special envoy to Sierra Leone, noting the serious security situation with the potential to complicate the Liberian peace process and destabilize the entire sub-region. 500,000 people are displaced and 200,000 more have fled their homeland. Disease and hunger in the camps kill many daily. Refugees and displaced are desperate for relief. Rural community dislocations has left the entire electoral process with technical complexities, free and fair democratic elections a lot more expensive. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, with a dreadful guerrilla campaign confronting an IMF-adjusted economy, an absence of substantial donor funding will kill democracy in Sierra Leone. Gorillas who kill peasants in remote villages, shoot cattle, set huts on fire, 
use drugs, and teach 12-year rules to carry AK-47s are today's terrorists, a threat to Africa's democratization, and they must be isolated. Insurgents who sit and talk with governments must be urged to drop their lethal weapons and make peace. Mr. President, I salute through you our Secretary General, his staff at the Secretariat, and all previous Secretary Generals for 50 years of committed service. Let us make the UN leaner, stronger, and keep alive the vision of its founding leaders. I thank you very much.